Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode about Git. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to create a public GitHub repository and how we can hook it to our local Git repository that it's on our local machine and how to commit and push all the files and all the changes to our remote Git repository on GitHub. So first of all, in order to create a Git repository on GitHub, you have to have an account. It's completely free, you can open it, and if you wanna be a developer, you should really have a public GitHub account where you share your code and you collaborate with other developers. I noticed in many, many years of development that a GitHub account well-maintained with a bunch of repositories on top with good code it's way better than a really like fancy portfolio during interviews or technical interviews. So after you created your GitHub account and you put like a beautiful picture, I don't know if you can find a picture better than mine because mine is pretty cool. But anyway, let's access our GitHub profile and let's click on this plus icon here on top and let's create a new repository. So let's define a repository name that of course has to be unique so if you type something that already exists uh, or you already have github is going to tell you that this repository already exists on this account so better not let's create something like totally generic for like git dash tutorials or like git tutorial it's going to automatically check if this name is available that's perfect a small description public repository for the tutorial series about Git. Perfect. And uh, here you have the option to create a public or a private repository. Uh, in order to create a, pri uh, a private repository, you have to pay because of course that's how GitHub makes money by paying for private repository. For the sake of this tutorial, like for the sake of letting uh, everyone around the world know your code, it's better to create a public repository. Private repositories are for private projects or corporate projects, something that you have to maintain privately and uh, protect it from the other user. Um, we have the option here to initialize the repository with a readme file. A readme file, it's uh, a simple, let's say wiki documentation of the repository to describe what the repository is about. Uh, for now, let's not add any uh, readme file because I want to show you how to create it from scratch. And let's not add a git ignore as well because I'm going to do a um, specific tutorial for it. But let's specify a license that in my case is just like a generic open source license. And of course, if you're confused, you can open the info and there's a really easy description on how to pick the perfect license for your project. Probably I should select the MIT license that I want. It's simple and permissive. So I want this to be completely accessible to everyone. And I don't care if you don't quote me on this tutorial, it's fine. Like, let's do whatever you want. Okay, now we're ready. Let's create a repository. And after a few seconds, we have our Git tutorial repository with the initial commit with our license in it. If we click, we're going to check, of course, the MIT license agreement that we have here. So that's pretty much it. Our repository automatically gets created with a branch. I'm going to do a tutorial about branches to like let you know what a branch is and how to create multiple branches. But uh, as a rule of thumb, every time you create a new repository, the default branch that, that gets created, it's called master branch. And the master branch is where you push and you commit all your code by default when you start with a new repository from scratch. So that's perfect. Now we need to hook and push our code to this uh, remote repository. So if we access our terminal, in my case, I'm using iterm, we are inside the folder git and uh, where we initialize previously our uh, repository. So if we open this in sublime text or whatever code editor you want to write or you want to use, 
you notice that here I don't have anything, it's completely empty. So let's create a new file from the terminal by just typing touch index.html and automatically you notice in the editor we have the index.html file that has been created. Let's write some HTML code. Perfect. We have our pretty standard HTML code with some HTML boilerplate. Uh, what we can do now, we can simply access back our terminal and write the usual get status to check where are we. We are currently on our branch master, we don't have any commits, so we are on a, our initial commit. And git detected that we have this new file that it's outside our uh, stream, is not added to our initial commit. So what we can do, we can use as suggested, and as I explained to you in a previous video, just git add and dot to add all the files. So if we say git status, we're gonna have our new file index.html added inside the cache and ready to be committed. So let's say git commit m single quotes and then let's write initial HTML file. Perfect. Now we should be able to push right to our git repository. So if we say git push we're gonna have an error because we don't have any push destination configured and that's where we need to specify and we need to set up the proper remote repository that we want our code to be pushed so if we access back our github account where we created our repository you will notice here we have a unique url now for this repository and the unique URL, you can grab it from clone on download here using the SSH, or if you want, you can use the HTTPS. So what we can do, we can copy this unique HTTPS link of our repository to our clipboard, then access back our terminal, and then writing the simple command of git remote to say to git, I want a remote repository to add the origin of this HTTPS repository and press enter. Now, nothing happened. We don't have any um, message or any confirmation, but if we write git remote dash V, we're gonna check and we're gonna have the result that our origin is set to fetch and push on both our unique URL, the git tutorial, git repository that we created in our account. And that's perfect. So now what we can do, we can simply try, but probably we're gonna fail to do git push. Here we cannot yet push to our git repository because we didn't define it any branch. As you can see here, Git is suggesting us to push to set an upstream to the origin that is our Git repository on GitHub to a master branch. So this last parameter is the name of the branch. And as I told you before, every time you create a Git repository, the default branch that get, gets created, it's called master. In order to avoid this message, this kind of error and annoying message, we can set the upstream, the default upstream default to the master repository. So let's say exactly what git suggests. So let's say git push dash dash set dash upstream origin and then master. And now, of course, as I told you before, we're having another error because now we are pushing properly in our origin master branch. But here we cannot do it because something is already inside the remote. Like here, update were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. That means that when we created our git repository, this new license file was initialized inside the repository. We don't have this new, this license file in our local repository. So we cannot push a code if it's not completely synced with the remote repository. Otherwise we risk to override a specific code and we don't wanna do it. We don't wanna delete this file. In order to fix this issue that is not really an issue, it's like the regular workflow, we need to fetch the repository before or we need to just simply pull. But before pulling, we need to set the upstream to the master branch that we wanna pull. So in order to do that, we can write git branch 
set app stream to origin forward slash master. So now we can safely get pull all the code that we need. Most likely because it's the first time that we're pulling a remote repository inside our local repository, we're gonna have this fatal error that is refusing to merge due to unrelated history. So the two branches, the two Git repositories, the one that we have in our local machine, the one that we have on GitHub, they have completely different histories. So in order to force these, we can use a specific tag from Git and the tag is Git pull space dash dash allow dash unrelated dash histories. This will tell Git to completely ignore the fact that our two Git repositories have different histories and to merge anyway. Right now when we try to merge for the first time uh, our terminal is gonna open uh, automatically Vim that it's a built-in code editor or IDE inside uh, the terminal and it's basically uh, giving us a small report with some comments and stuff in order to uh, confirm and quit Vim this could be confusing because if you start typing something like weird code is gonna happen Vim it's kind of like confusing if you're not used to it you can just type column and then Q to say quit and confirm so Basically, now we have our confirmation message that the merge made by the recursive strategy, because we allow the unrelated history to be merged, we have 20, 20, 21 new lines inside this license file. And if we open back our code editor, in my case Sublime Text, you will notice that inside our Git folder we have also the license. And finally, now that our local repositories and remote origin repositories are merged, they have the same history and the app stream is set, we can simply get push. And that's it, perfect. Now if we access back our remote repository and we refresh, we have our merge branch master of Alicad git tutorial and here we have our index.html with the commit in each initial HTML file. If we access it, of course, we're gonna have all the code that we wrote before. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And as usual, until the next lesson, happy coding.